Well, good morning, everyone. This is uh, Pastor Terry, and we're here, and we're going to be talking about prayer today. We're going to be praying uh, this morning, and so I, I hope you guys can join us uh, and enjoy the time of teaching, the time of prayer, and believe me, this is the time for prayer. More than any time in the world is when, we, when you're going through something, and I know that uh, there's people that are going through things that, uh, other than dealing with this virus that we're dealing with, and people that are dealing with the virus. Uh, I've got prayer requests in from folks that uh, their loved ones had passed away, and uh, they're having uh, a graveside service for them, and and um, and just a immediate family. Three or four people are going to be going to the service, and uh, so. You know, we need to be praying for these families, for these people that are in the hospital right now that are suffering and coming to the point to where they may, they may not, they may not make it because of uh, their health issues that they've had previous. This virus just weakens them and causes them to not be able to make it. So we're going to pray and, and we're going to see God move. And we're going to see good things happening, I believe, today. Uh, at least we're going to... We're, we're, our, my hope, my expectation for this is to be able to impart into your heart some peace, to be able to impart into your life some stability and the knowing that God sustains and keeps us in everything and in every way. And so I got some, uh, I got some um, scriptures and things I want to go over and just share with you guys. And um, and so glad that, that you're able to come on and enjoy it with us. But look, this in this, in this these scriptures, prayer is the answer. That that and that that's what you need to say to yourself out loud right now. Just say prayer is the answer. In us communicating with God, you know, I know that um, uh, in in some people's lives when they communicate with God, they. are you know, they're in a begging mood or they're in a mood to where they seeing if they can get God to, you know, kind of be graceful and nice and do something for them. But there's a lot of things that the Lord has already done on our behalf as born again Christians. We're, we're, we're not like the people of the Old Testament where God was somewhere out there somewhere and they were calling on him to come and help them it's different today god is with us he is inside of us the holy spirit has filled us thank you holy spirit <sighs> for dwelling in me and in all those who have called upon your name in the name of jesus and lord i want to thank you that, that you are with us today so we don't have to be concerned about our prayers going past the ceiling or or God opening up the heavens, renting the heavens and pouring out his blessing. He has already poured out his blessing on us through Jesus Christ. So let's look at some scriptures, kind of kind of help stabilize this a little bit. But one of the main scriptures that I live by, I in my heart, I could quote this scripture backwards and forwards. I've done it many, many times. And you should let this scripture be a scripture that's going to be a part of your life and a part of your heart. And this is, prayer is the answer. Philippians 4, 6, and 7. This is a wonderful, great scripture. And this is what it says. Be anxious for nothing. That means don't worry about a thing. Don't let anything bother you because he's with us. Remember that? He's not out there somewhere to where we have to go and find him He's not, he, he's not, doesn't have to rent the heavens. He's here for us now, right now. The Father God, the Holy Spirit, the Lord Jesus embodies us right now. So don't be worried. Don't be worried about anything, but in everything. Say everything out loud. Everything, but in everything. That means everything in the Greek. So, in everything by prayer, I want you to keep your eye on this, and supplication with thanksgiving, 
Let your requests be made known to God and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your heart and your mind through Christ Jesus. Now, here's the key. The key is this. We got to pray. And, and prayer is, listen, prayer is not, I know that when we say certain words, our religious minds just kick in the gear. And then we start thinking on a religious plane. I'm going to let you know God is a whole lot more practical. He's a whole lot more real. And what we, the phrase down to earth, we know that, of course, he's not He's not an earthly being, but he's more real, real than what most people make him out to be. He is so much involved in your everyday real life, and he wants you to be real with him. He wants you to have a relationship with him in prayer. And this, I'm going to change the word altogether. Let's say this. It says, don't be worried about anything. But in everything, talk to God about it. That's what prayer is. Communing and talking to God. So I'm going to just, I mean, I could be sitting anywhere. I, I actually love to just talk to God at any time. I could be out on the deck and swinging on the swing and, and just talking to him like I'm talking to my wife or talking to a friend. And just say, Lord, you know, this virus thing really upsetting people. And, you know, it's really causing harm in the lives of people. And, Lord, I pray you'd help us understand. And you'd help us to have a grip on our emotions. Lord, just help us do, do it the right way. And, you know, you just talk to him. And, and he's hearing you. And let me tell you something. God is listening for you to talk to him. I could say God's listening to you to pray to him. But then your religious mind kicks in again. And then the word supplication. I mean, my goodness gracious, what a religious word. But all it means is this. Let's write it down. Make a list of what's needed and present it to God. Here, Lord, uh, this is, I need this. and need toilet paper. Everybody going to need toilet paper, right? And then write it down and say, Lord, this is my petition. This is my supplication. I give it to you, and I pray you'd bring this to pass. I pray you'd help me get the whatever I need. And you just call it out to him. That's what, what it is. And so when you talk to God, and then when you write down things, or you make a list, and you know, somebody says, well, I can make a list in my mind. Well, do that. Make a list in your mind, but you need to talk to God about your list. And then the third word there that I really want to put some emphasis on is this with thanksgiving. That means you're going to be thankful for what you're praying for. You know, a lot of folks are more on the give me, give me, give me than on the thank you that you've given. Thank you, Lord. I pray you, thanking you that you have given to me the things that I need. Lord, I give you praise for this. Lord, I give you honor for it. You know, I, I want to thank you, Lord, that I have food in my house. Lord, I want to thank you that I have a house to live in. I want to thank you, Lord, that, that I have <clears throat> income. I want to thank you that you, Lord, you're meeting all my needs. I want to thank you, Father, that you are the, my supply. You're the sustainer and the one who keeps my life. And, you know, that's the way you should be praying. Pray or talk to God. Write down the things that you need. Present it to the Lord give thanks for it. Lord, thank you for this list being completed. And, and Lord, thank you. I don't know how you're going to do it, but I know, Lord, you said to present it to you and you would do it. And look what it says. And let your request be made known to God. In other words, you got to go to him, talk to him, give him your request, be thankful. And then this is what happens. He's, and this is his part, not your part. This is his part and the peace of God, his peace, which passes or surpasses all understanding. It'll guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. You got to pray. 
You got to give thanks to God. And, and of course, you can talk to my wife. I'm not one of those who I've got. I'm not a prayer closet type prayer. I don't have a prayer closet. I I pray everywhere. I talk to God anywhere and everywhere. I don't have to have a formula or I don't have to sit down in a certain posture. I just know God's with me. He hears me. He's my father. And just like a father being with a child, the child can talk to the father without falling on his knees. <laughs> I'm letting you know God is more practical in relationship than most people want him to be. They want him to be something, you know, religious. But listen, look at the next scripture. It's in Hebrews chapter 6, or 4 rather, verse 6. This is one of my favorite scriptures too. One that I got that I can quote frontward and backwards because I quote it all the time. It says, let us come boldly. That means come without any fear. To come without any sense of condemnation or sin. Because all of that has been taken care of at the cross. Hey, we're, the Passover starts at 6 o'clock today. Praise God, that means the blood of Jesus Christ was shed for our sins. The, the cross, you know, the doorpost, you know, when Moses put the blood on the doorpost, that Jesus' head was on the top of the cross and his hands were on the, the, reached out across the cross. That's the same mark year, hundreds of years before, 2,000 years before Jesus was born, Moses made the cross on the doorpost with the blood for the sacrifice to protect the people from the death angel. You have the blood of Jesus Christ in your heart from the top to the bottom to protect you from anything and all things. The blood of Jesus Christ is our covering. And today we're starting to celebrate uh, him and what he did for us. But look what it says. Come boldly before the throne of grace that you might obtain. Say obtain. I'm going to receive. He, he didn't say come boldly before the throne of grace that you might get God to give you something. He says to come get it. Come boldly before the throne of grace that you might obtain or receive and get all the mercy you ever going to need. You know, I'm going to let you know, mercy, the mercy of God is in abundance. It's in abundance. It's at his throne. He's waiting on you. <laughs> Listen, if you try to try to get God to do something, he's saying to you today. I've done it. I've got my mercy is flooded out through Jesus. Jesus, when he came, mercy came. Come and receive all the mercy you want. Come receive it. And then it says, and find grace to help. In other words, you're going to find the answer from God, and it's going to be grace. How many of you know that grace is not an earned thing? It is a freely given by God thing. So come and find that freely given help from God in time of need. Everybody, come. No, this is, please, change your attitude. Change the way you think about God and the way you think about how he looks at you when you approach him. Because he looks at you in a way different way than what most people think he looks at them as. He looks at you as a, as a child that belongs to him. He looks at you as his provider of that child, just like your children in your home. When, I, when my kids were children, provide for them in my home. Now they're adults, they got their own children, so they're providing for their children. But he's a provider. He's, he wants to provide for you. And he's also loving. He's tenderhearted. He's kind. He's not judgmental. He's not looking at you down his nose. He's not holding his, uh, up his arms and folding them and saying, I know what you've been like. I know what you've been doing. He's not doing that. He's not condemning you at all. But he is saying, come to me. Come to me boldly so that I may give you mercy 
You may obtain mercy. You may just get into that mercy and find the help, find the grace that's going to cause you. Let, let me put it another way. Find the promise of God's complete answer for you. In other words, there's something in the Bible. There's a promise in the Bible that says, I have already provided this for you through Jesus Christ. Receive it. Come find and receive that grace. And so it'll help you in that time of need. And so therefore, everybody should come to God. Now, we need to start praying today and from now on and just start praying uh, for for different things. And first, one of the first things I want to pray about, I want you to pray about, I want you to think about, because see, as born again Christians, we are different people. We are new creations in Christ. We are the children of God. We do have his ability and his power living inside of us. The Bible says the same power that raised Jesus from the dead dwells in us. And that Holy Spirit that lives inside of us that quickened Jesus from the dead is wanting to work in your everyday life. Listen, this is what the church should be doing, what we should be following after. We, we, should, we shouldn't feed fear. Don't feed fear with words. In fact, our words and our actions should stand out in the crowd. They should know us. They should say, he, he or she, they're, 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 they trust in God. They really trust in God. And some of them will even call you a fool because you're trusting God in certain ways. And, and they say, well, you, 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 you're being stupid because see this thing is, and you go, well, no, no, I'm protected. The blood of Jesus Christ covers me and it protects me. The, the angels of God surround me. They protect me. This thing has no power in my life. And, and instead of instead of you know feeding any kind of fear, we we, we should be we should be uh, filled with with faith and speaking that faith that that we shouldn't be speaking any fear-filled conversation. We should be speaking the faith of God instead speaking God's word of victory over our life. That's what we should be doing. We should also exude. Confidence. We have let confidence just flow. Look, it's just like it seeps out of us. You know, while other people are panicking, while other people are, you know, I'm going to let you know if you watch television, oh, Lord have mercy. I mean, there's no good thing that they're saying on television that's going to build your faith. I'll guarantee you it'll build fear more than it'll build faith. So don't, don't, if you watch TV, stop. Speak the word of God over your life. So Christians should be looking, they should look different. It should, you should, instead of panicking, we should be people of confidence. We should be people of hope, expectation. We expect God to move in this time. We expect God to meet all our needs. We expect all the things that are, that are going on that they will not affect us. We expect that God's moving. We expect the peace of God to reign and rule in our life. And, and we expect that even though people are unsettled and things are, the things are disturbed, we expect by faith that God is going to, is stabilizing and sustaining all of us, not only Christians, but everybody. We should offer help as Christians. Instead of hoarding up we should give. You know, I, I'll, I'll guarantee you right now, there are people that's listening to me that probably got more toilet paper than they got anything else in the world. You know, find somebody. I, 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 did, I remember whenever this thing first started, I'm going to, we go to Sam's to buy a lot of our stuff, my Susan and I. So we, we kind of, you know, have stocks and stuff. But all of a sudden, I see the toilet paper just flying off the shelves and people going out with these big, you know, great big containers, big things of toilet paper. And, and I'm with four or five of them in their basket. I'm thinking, what are you, what are you all doing? I actually asked, there's one lady, I said, why are you buying so much toilet paper? And she says, well, she says, my son's in the service and he's overseas. And he wrote me and told me I'd better prepare something. This thing coming. It's not going to be good. And I got around, and I didn't know, you know, I knew there was a virus, but I didn't know that, 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 you know, it was affecting the world like it is. And so 
I didn't, of course, didn't buy any. I come home and Susan says, we, you know, we're needing toilet paper. <laughs> I said, okay, Lord, <laughs> you know what we need. We need toilet paper. And so I went to a, a prayer group, a men's prayer group on Friday morning, that Friday morning. And, and then I got out and it was like, you know, 8, 830. And I got in, a, in, this, in my spirit, I hear, go to Sam's now. I said, okay. So I go to Sam's and I walk in and there's a pallet of toilet paper. They literally just brought it down and set it on the floor, tore the plastic off and people started grabbing toilet paper like it was going out of style. So I grabbed me a couple of bags and put it in my, in my uh, thing and, and went, went out. And, and then I got there and I said, you know, I'm not afraid. Of, I wasn't afraid of the virus or whatever. I I was just thinking, there's not going to be any toilet paper uh, if people keep acting like this. So I went ahead and got me two packs. Well, for me and Susan, two them big packs of toilet paper will last us a long time. So, you know, but we wasn't hoarding up. But, you know, some people are. And, and you know, if you have more than you need, you could, and somebody you know somebody that has it, give it to them. You know, you, if you're if you're young enough and you're able to run errands for the the elderly and do things and go pray for people, we we pray for we've been praying for people. We talk to somebody, talk to people every day on the phone, try to encourage people and and uh, you know do texting and do we're doing everything we can to stay in touch with people so that they you know will have uh, they don't feel like somebody cares because otherwise. They're going to, um, uh, you know, get into that mode to where there's nobody been calling me or praying for me. You know, one of the things we need to pray for is is our leaders. And uh, second, First Timothy chapter two, um, it says, "Therefore I exhort, first of all." Now listen to this. These three words come up again. Supplication that all supplication prayers and intercessions and giving of thanks. There's only one word in there that didn't come up before, that was intercessions. For supplications, write it out, prayers, intercession, and giving thanks to God. For who? All men, everybody. Let's pray for everybody. And by the way, if you have a prayer request, you can post it either on here or you can go to Messenger and message me the prayer request. We will definitely pray for it for sure. But we need to be praying for everybody. But for sure, one of the other things we need to pray for is for our kings, which we don't have kings today. We have presidents. For our presidents and for all that are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and reverence. For this is good, and it's acceptable in the sight of God. This is good and accept, acceptable in the sight of God. God seeing this. God is actually looking for someone to intercede. You know, we, we God is waiting for you. He's not waiting. You're not waiting for God. God's waiting for you and me. He's waiting for you and me to pray and for us to reach out our hand and touch and for us to, to, to move in the lives of people. He's waiting for me and you. And he says, we, we can show love and support by praying for our leaders in this way. We pray for every leader that they would have wisdom. And believe me, we need some God wisdom on everything that's going on today that they would have strength. And you know, sometimes strength is saying no. Well, and guidance from God. We need to pray for the peace to be upon our leaders. It's hard to make decisions if you're not in peace. If you're in anguish, it's hard to make decisions. We speak and pray the peace of God on all of our leaders in this country and then from our president all the way down to our city councilman, we pray peace on them in the name of Jesus Christ. And we pray, Lord, that, that 
all these leaders will work together and be working as, as, as one. And Lord God, it, I could see at the very beginning it looked like everybody was working together, but now, Lord, it seems like people are starting to divide again and start saying bad things about each other. And I pray that will stop in the name of Jesus. Lord, I pray your supernatural understanding and your decision making and your their, that that ability regarding all that would affect our lives will you'll give that to our leaders, our presidents, our governors, our councilmen. Lord, we pray you give that to them in Jesus' name and give it to all the people in our land. That Lord God, that they would be wise and they would know what to do and how to do it, do it the right way. You know, we we should be praying. More the economy. You know, there's a lot of people that are out of work and they're, they're having a hard time. And we should be praying that, that fear, that fear would just stop. And that our economic uh, activity would be able to pick back up. And that they would, get, Lord, those leaders we'd pray for, that you'd give them wisdom of how we can re- reignite some of the, some of the small businesses that, that had to shut down because of this. And Lord God, I pray, thanking you right now. I thank you for a vaccine or for for something that would come in to kill this virus and that it'll just die away. And Lord, you know, it's amazing how you can stop the locusts. You can stop the storm. Jesus, she was in the boat and was sleeping. And, and when you was in that boat, Lord Jesus, and the winds and the waves came and splattered the water all into the ship, and the disciples woke you up and said, Jesus, don't you care that we lie, die? And then he calmed the storms. And then he didn't go over there and pat him on the back and say, man, I'm glad you're feeling better. He didn't say that. You know what he said? What, what, you, you have little faith. In other words, where's your faith? Why didn't you do something? <laughs> well, hey, look, it's time for us to start speaking to these viruses, to these things that's going on. Instead of speaking about how war, how much worse it's getting, let's start speaking about how it's dying in the name of Jesus. How that that whatever that needs to come in to kill it will come in. You know, I, I know that some preachers are praying for a heat wave to come in and expecting that heat to kill it. If that's the answer. Then I pray the same thing. I agree with that in Jesus' name. But one of the other things is is we need to pray. Hallelujah, for uh, for protection for the jobs of those who have lost them, that they'll be able to get them back and be able to have more. In fact, have a better job. And uh, and Lord, I pray we, that right now we need to pray protection over each one of us, and we're going to pray this prayer over uh, us now. We need to pray Psalms 91, the Psalm of protection. There's other Psalms of protection too, but this is the main one. And this is the one that I pray over our life and our, my and Susan's life. And, and I want you to, and this is how I got it written down for me to pray. I've been doing it for years. Just this, what you are fixing to see, I copied and pasted it from me having done it years ago. I remember back before the computer thing and everything, all the generations of what we live in now. And I printed off papers with my confessions. And I put them in my Bible. And I had, and I, I found this paper this, that had glue on the back, and I glued it to all the pages in the Bible that didn't mean that much to me, like the maps and things. And I would open it up every morning. I would confess these scriptures over my life. And now I got them on the computer, so all I got to do is just click and confess. But listen, this is Psalms 91. You want to put it in the first person, and I want everybody that's listening to me. And they are going to listen to me. I pray, I want you to pray this prayer out loud for yourself. And 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 this is the way I do it. You know, I, I, I just say, Lord, I want to thank you that I am the man who dwells in the secret place of the Most High. Lord, I say of you, Lord, you are my refuge. You are my fortress. You're my God. In you, Lord God, I trust. And surely... You shall deliver me from the snare of the fowler and from the purplest pestilence. And you shall cover me with your feathers, Lord. And under your wings, I will take refuge. 
Lord, your tr truth shall be my shield and buckler. Your word of truth shall be my shield and buckler. I shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor for the pestilence, nor for the viruses that walk in darkness and the destruction that lays waste at noonday. Listen, a thousand may fall at my side and a 10,000 at my right hand, but it will not come near me, my house, my wife, my family, my children, in the name of Jesus. Only with my eyes will I look and see the reward of the wicked. Because I made the Lord, who is my refuge, even the most high, my dwelling place. No evil shall befall me, nor any plague come near my dwelling. Because he's given his angels charge over me to keep me in all of my ways. And in their hands they will bear me up, lest I dash my foot against a stone. Hallelujah. I shall tread upon the lion and the cobra and the young lion and the serpent. I will trample underfoot. Devil, you have no power over me. You under my foot in Jesus' name. Because I have set my love upon him. Therefore, he will deliver me. He will set me on high because I have known his name. His name is Jesus. Hallelujah. I shall call upon him and he will answer me. I pray, I talk to him and he answers me. I tell people all the time, I say, uh, they, you know, they talk about something. I say, well, listen, you just get me to pray for you. God hears everything I say. <laughs> That's what you need to do. You need to start saying that. I call upon him and he will answer me. He will be with me in trouble. He's with us now, right now. The issue in him being here, the issue is us not recognizing it and us not coming boldly to him and joining together with his word and agreeing with what he says rather than agreeing with what the world says. Keep it on. He says, I shall call upon him. He shall answer me and he will be with me in trouble. He will deliver me and honor me and with long life. Will he satisfy me and show me his salvation? I say, I'm going to live long, I'm going to live strong, and I'm going to serve the Lord for many, many years to come. And that's what you can say too, and you can be the same way. Look, the next thing we need to pray for is we need to pray against, against the spirit of fear. I'm not talking about the way you feel. I'm talking about there's an evil spirit out there, and it's, he promotes fear. And it's a spirit of fear. And that's what this whole thing is hinged on, is fear. <clears throat> and fear uh, is when you don't know something. You know, when you're in the dark of something, you know, if you got a, a door and, and on the other side you open the door and it's pitch dark, you, you're really cautious about walking in that room. And even if you know the room, you don't want to walk into it and you do it carefully because you fear what you can't, See, you fear what you don't understand. Well, let me tell you something. That's the reason that this thing is so powerful is because we don't know, we didn't know it, we didn't understand it. We're learning more and more about it now, but it causes fear. And so fear breaks down your system to believe and trust anybody. So that spirit spirit, a actual spirit of fear is operating in the world today and causing trouble. It says in Isaiah 41 10, fear not. <laughs> that says for you to do that, not for God. Don't pray God, don't get rid of this fear. It says you don't fear. Fear not. He says, why? I'm with you. Don't be dismayed. For I'm your God. Hallelujah. He's my God. I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. All, all we've been talking about today is that. He'll strengthen you. He'll help you. And listen, I will uphold you with the right, with my, the right, <laughs> I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Who is that? 
Jesus is his right hand. Amen. And so in the name of Jesus, that name which is above every name, we speak against you, Satan, in the name of Jesus, and we command you to stop your operations now in Jesus' mighty name. Spirit of fear, you have no place in our land. You have no place to operate in our country. We break your power in the name of Jesus now. We loose the spirit of peace and power and a sound mind over all the people because the Bible declares in 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7, hallelujah, God's not given me, say me, that's who it is. God's not given me a spirit of fear, but a power, a spirit of love, and a spirit of a well-balanced, sound mind. That's what you say. When fear tries to creep in on you, you speak this scripture out loud. This is a promise. <clears throat> God's not giving me a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a well-balanced, sound mind. You know, one of the things we also need to be using our prayer time for or talking to God about is for people to come to Jesus Christ and be born again and saved. Hallelujah. You know, God has no, he did not bring this disease into our lives. He's not even causing trouble in your life in any way. He is your helper. He is your savior. He is the one who died on the cross for you. And again, at six o'clock, the Passover starts and we're celebrating what he did for us. And that day that he uh, walked on the earth and today, if you want to take communion, let the representation of the blood and of the, his flesh be in front of you and say, Jesus, I remember this is the Passover that you completed for us and take that communion knowing that he broke his body for you, and spilt his blood for you. And Jesus is the answer to all your needs and problems. The problem with you is this. You got to go to him and ask him to come into your heart. Listen, I'm going to pray a prayer. And I want you to pray this prayer with me. Because if you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you are living in, a, in this world without hope. And then there's going to come a day, everybody, not one person is going to miss that door that goes into eternity. We call it death, but it's the door that goes into eternity. And you're going to have to go somewhere. You're either going to go to heaven are you going to go, well, we don't want to talk about that. But you'll be separated from God if you don't have Jesus Christ in your heart. People are not going, listen, people are not going to hell because of their sin. Jesus took care of that on the cross of Calvary. They're going to hell because they don't accept what Jesus did. And they don't accept him as their Lord and Savior. And you know, I remember today, August 17th, 1972, when I prayed that prayer that really connected from my heart to Jesus's heart. And I lifted up my hand, real simple prayer. And I said, Lord Jesus, if you're real, and that's what I said, if you're real, I want you to come into my heart, my life. I want you to take control of me because I have messed my life up. And I need you. I need you to come into me and be my Lord and Savior. Take control of my life today, Lord. I, I give you my life. And that's all I prayed. And that moment, Jesus came into my heart. My spirit became a new spirit in Christ, became born again. Not only that, I wanted to tell somebody about what just happened. And then I wanted to find out more about who Jesus is and was. And now I've been learning for the last 48 years and continue to learn. And you know, Jesus wants to be your Lord and Savior. And for those of you who have made him Lord of your life, you know, and you feel like your relationship is kind of drawn away, go back to him. Just go to him and say, Lord, renew unto me 
the joy and the happiness of my salvation. Let me be revived in you and receive back that which he's freely given to you. Well, look, as I thank you guys for coming on. Janet and Deerstone, good to see you. Hadn't seen you in a long time. Need to put a picture on your Facebook thing so we can know who what you're looking like. I, I remember you, good looking woman, so put it on there. And uh, Amy and Sarah McGee, thank you for coming on. Jeanette, thank you for being with us today. And, and, and um, let's see, Tiffany and Sissy and um, yeah. who? Ed, he's on there. Oh, Ed Jackson. And then, you know, all those, if you got prayer requests, like I say, we will pray for you. Message us and we will pray for the prayer request. And we'll even give you a phone call and pray with you personally if you need that. But, you know, we need to stay in contact with one another. We need to continually touch one another's lives. And uh, so let's continue to do that. Hey, look, Susan, I love you. Say, we love you, Susan. We love you. She's over there sitting on the couch with her pajamas on. No, but anyhow, pajamas. oh, she ain't got her pajamas on. She changed her clothes. <laughs> anyhow, but, you know, it's, it's kind of hard to not. There day, there's been days we've had our pajamas on all day long. And um, and so, but these, <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm dressed, by the way. Just let you guys know that. But look here, we love you, and uh, we uh, are thankful for you, and I'll be coming back on periodically. I want to do it every day, but I, I say that. Hey, Charles, good to see you, Charlie Key. Man, I saw you riding your bicycle yesterday on on Facebook. I love that. Uh, love you guys. Fosters love you, and thank you for being with us. So bless you guys, and we're going we're gonna to go ahead and hang it up and talk to you later, okay? God bless. Hey, by the way, if you liked what we talked about today, share it and like it or love it or something. But, you know, sharing it puts it on your page and all the people that you want to hear this message will hear it. And so thank you for doing it. And God bless you. Bye-bye. Talk.